Blackpool and England player admitted drink driving and racially abusing a police officer. Prosecutors dropped four other charges, including criminal damage, and no charges were brought over a collision with a pedestrian who admitted she had stepped out in front of Sinclair's vehicle. I was at Blackpool Magistrates Court. The court heard police were called to Trevor Sinclair's home in Lytham on the 12th of November last year. When they arrived, they found the 44-year-old had already left the address and officers discovered him and his Tesla car on Clifton Drive in Blackpool a short time later that evening. In a statement read to the court, PC Gareth Evans said that the former England star appeared drunk, unsteady on his feet and with his eyes glazed over. A breath test taken at the side of the road revealed Sinclair was twice the legal drink drive limit. PC Evans said that the footballer turned pundit was at first calm and courteous, but that his behaviour changed dramatically when he was arrested. His tone became confrontational, the court was told, and he suggested that PC Evans was a racist. When he was transferred from a patrol car to a van to be taken to a police station, Sinclair called the officer a white four-letter expletive. PC Evans said Sinclair's behaviour continued to be obnoxious, aggressive and racist while he was waiting to be dealt with in the custody suite. Trevor Sinclair pleaded guilty here to driving while on fifth through drink and a racially aggravated public order offence. His solicitor Nick Freeman then sought to put the issue in context but stressed he was not attempting to excuse it. The court then heard Trevor Sinclair had been out for a meal with his family and was heading home for an evening in front of the television. But when the group decided to stop at a bar on the way back, a woman had approached him, rubbed him on the head and called him a little chocolate man. Mr Freeman said Mr Sinclair was extremely upset and that the incident had sparked a dispute within the family when they returned home because different members had reacted differently to it. Sinclair took himself outside of the house and sat in his car before foolishly deciding to drive away. Went <laughs> after we lost one, Drew. <laughs> we always used to go out. Yeah, we love going out. I mean, we had a different, it was a different era. You know, we weren't um, told that we can't go out. Weren't scrutinised. Um, no, so much absolutely. There's now. no social media, no uh, camera phones. And yeah, we, we had a really good time. You know, some of the times that we went out, um, we had some of the best nights that I've ever had. In my life, never mind holiday times. It was, it was just a great era, and we, we we went to the spot in Covent Garden. Um, we went to certain nightclubs around London, and it was uh, yeah, it was top draw. I remember going to the the Asienda in Manchester mm -hmm. after a game and taking all the boys in there. Deech, I think Deech knew one of the DJs, and um, we all got on the guest list, walked in, and yeah, it was wild, and uh, we all had a good time. Nothing went down, you know. It was all so like. Were good you ever humor. approached by any fans that would be a bit appalled yeah, that be, you're out? And, oh no, or they weren't we'd, bothered. We'd just buy them a drink and say, "Shut up, get over here, have right. a drink with us, and just turn it into a positive." You know, mm. and like get rid of the negative. We're here to have a good time. Let's forget it, about the game. Like, but the receiving end of mindless cowards. You will have said that investigating internally. I'm not holding my breath. Mm. And a Yeovil Town Club statement said Yeovil can confirm we're aware of the audio which contains discriminatory chanting from Saturday's game against York, etc, etc, and it's an investigation. Yeah, yeah, you can guess what they're saying. But Trevor, does it go to show that all the messaging, and if you like, the taking the knee gestures over the last few years, have pretty much been pointless? No, I think it goes right against that. I think it means that we've still got a lot of work to do. I think um, when you hear Leno speak there or when, when he tweeted what he tweeted about he first experienced racism 20 years ago when he first started playing football and he's still experiencing it now. I think it's um, a failure on everyone as a, as a society. That's what I mean, which means all the campaigning has been pretty pointless. Why has it been pointless? Well, because if we, don't size, do, if we don't was, do anything... I was getting it 20 years ago and I'm getting it If we it don't do anything, nothing will happen. So, you know, we, we go back to, you know, 1965, 1968 when the race acts was, was actually wrote and it became a crime to racially abuse anyone. Um, and it, we're just dragging our feet to, to, to put it over the line and, and make sure that this abhorrent behaviour from people, vile people, should stop. And if it doesn't stop, in football, we can, we can uh, manage this situation ourselves. We can ban him. We can uh, tell his workplace what he's been up to. They can uh, report him to the police or the people because it wasn't just one. And there wasn't a lot of people. I've seen this video. There wasn't a lot of people um, it, behind the goal where this happened. So it must be quite easy to identify the people that, are, that were doing this. Get them banned. Kick them out of football. You're not wanted. And let's move on with our game and let's move Have on. Have you heard Trevor Sinclair's comments? Respect and free speech. 
Well, Trevor Sinclair is a former West Ham footballer, one of the best players I've ever seen play at West Ham, and I think he's a great football pundit. But he put out a tweet within, I think, minutes or hours of the Queen's death. I can't remember what it said, but it was pretty pretty out there, let's, shall we say. He's now under investigation from uh, the radio station that employs him as a pundit, quite right too, in my view. And it's all very well saying respect and free speech. He wasn't showing any respect at all. And there are t- there's a time and a place for a debate about the British Empire and the royal family's role in the British Empire and slavery. And that's what he was essentially talking about. But, oh my goodness, I must admit, when I saw that, I thought, you know what, I'm not interested in your comments on football anymore. If that, if that is the kind of person that you are, when you, you actually go ahead and tweet that kind of thing within a very short time of Her Majesty's death, I don't take you seriously anymore. And I'm afraid, I suspect, the majority of people would agree. And I'm not trying to sort of quash free speech, but if you say things, words have consequences. And there is a time and a place for everything, and I'm afraid he totally misjudged that. And this is somebody who's got convictions for um, being racist against a police officer. So not sure I'm going to take him very seriously on this. (laughs) 